Welcome to Electron Lime. Now we've used this, this particular differential equation a few times already to find different kinds of integrating factors. What we want to explore now is how we find the infinite number of integrating factors. Remember the, the concept that if we found the integrating factor, we can find any other integrating factor by multiplying the integrating factor that we found by any function of the solution, u. Remember that the differential equations, once it's exact, or if it has a, a, a particular solution, we can find the solution by realizing that du, the differential of the solution, is equal to the same form as the original differential equation, and we set it then also equal to zero. If we then integrate du and find u, u will be equal to a constant, and then we find out we can actually find the value for u in terms of x and y by solving the differential equation once we have the exact differential equation. Now, of course, to turn the equation into an exact differential equation, we take the existing differential equation and multiplying by the uh, what we call integration factor. So in this case, we take the equation, we say that f times the quantity 3x squared y dx minus x cubed dy is equal to zero. Now, this would be one particular integrating factor. In the last, in the last video, we found that integrating factor to be one over x to the sixth. That wasn't the only one we found, but that was one of them. Now, when you say, well, I can find any other integrating factor by taking a given integrating factor and multiplying it times a function of y, a function of the solution, which is u. In other words, we could say that a new integrating factor would be equal to taking the old integrating factor, 1 over 6, or 1 over x to the 6th power, and multiply it times a function of u. Let's say in this case, we're just simply going to multiply it times u. If we do that, this would therefore be equal to y over x times 1 over x to the 6th. Oh, this would be y over x cubed, excuse me. And so this would be equal to y divided by x to the 9. And so y over x to the 9 would be another integrating factor. What we could also do is we could say, well, we can multiply that times 1 over u. So, for example, an integrating factor would be equal to 1 over u. Of course, that would still be a function of u times f. So in this case, that would be 1 over u times the integrating factor 1 over x to the 6th. And, of course, 1 over u would be x cubed divided by y times 1 over x to the 6th, and so that would be equal to 1 over y times x cubed. Or what we could say is, well, we can find another integrating factor by taking 1 over u squared, which again is a function of u, times the integrating factor that we found, in this case was 1 over 6, so that would be equal to 1 over u squared times 1 over x to the 6th, which is equal to, in this case would be x to the 6th divided by y squared times 1 over x to the 6th, which is equal to 1 over y squared. And if you remember, a couple of videos ago, we also found this to be one of the integrating factors. And again, if you don't like that one, you can say, well, I can find another integrating factor by taking 1 over u cubed, multiply times the integrating factor that I found, which is equal to 1 over uh, u cubed times 1 over x to the 6th, which is equal to x to the 9th divided by y cubed times 1 over x to the 6th, and you find that you get x cubed divided by y cubed, and there you would have another integrating factor. So you can see that since you can calculate any legitimate integrating factor by any function of u, you can find an infinite number of integrating factors all of them, when you multiply in times the original differential equation, it will give you an exact differential equation which you can solve to find the actual solution. It's quite amazing, but that's how it works.